One of my favorite shows is Mr. Robot, which ran on the USA Network here in the United States from 2015 to 2019. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, uh, in the second season, Elliot gets himself thrown in jail to try to stop uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, if you have seen the show, you know that Endeavor ultimately failed. What if I told you Linux also has a jail? Do you think it would have stopped Mr. Robot? Maybe. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to tell you all about Linux Jail. Stick with me. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for a notification. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comments below. And lastly, stick around all the way to the end to make sure you get the most out of this video. Let's do this thing. All right, so Linux Jail. Uh, it is also known as Chirrut Jail or simply just Chirrut. Um, it is a real thing, and it's used to run processes in an isolated environment. Running processes in an isolated environment can be extremely useful for limiting user access to the system, testing and development, and even running lightweight virtual environments. To take advantage of Chirrut, um, to take advantage of Chirrut, you will need to create a Chirrut directory. With a Chirrut directory, you will basically be setting up a Linux environment from scratch. Uh, it will only have access uh, to what applications you give it access to and will not be able to access anything outside of the true directory. It'll actually show that as the root of their file system. So you will need to make sure that you include any binary and library files for applications you wish to be available in the true directory. And we'll cover that when we get down to configuration. Now, true directories can be set up and be accessed from your command line session. Uh, they can also be used to put an SSH user in when they log in through SSH. I'm going to be actually showing you both access methods today in this video. Now, this may all sound uh, intimidating, but we're going to go through it together. I'm going to walk you through it and explain all along the way, so don't sweat it. Um, the last couple of videos I've actually done covered character devices as well as shell built-ins, and you'll actually see some of those today. So if you're curious on more about those, go ahead and hit the video up top. All right, so let's go ahead and actually get into the configuration of Chirrut. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink myself down here. All right, so one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do is you're gonna have sudo access or root access to, um, to the system. So you can go ahead and make sure that you're able to go ahead and complete everything. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create the actual Chirrut directory. So let's go ahead and do sudo mcdir. And then we're going to go ahead and do home slash true. And you can stick it really anywhere that you want. I'm sticking it there. All right. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and get this thing set up for SSH. Now, if you are just setting this up to use on your personal device without using SSH, then don't worry about these, these next uh, this next step. Because um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a slash dev directory inside of our to root directory. So that slash dev directory is not needed if you are not SSHing into your system. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do sudo make dir home to root. And then we're going to go ahead and call it dev. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and CD into that directory because we're going to run a few commands that we're going to need to be actually inside the slash dev directory. So let's do that. There we go. We are inside that directory. Now, the next four commands where I'm going to be running will be to create files that are going to be necessary for you to log in through a shell over SSH. So let's go ahead and do that. For that, we're going to be using the make nod command. We're going to do tack m. Then we're going to do 666 null c and then one space three. And essentially what's happening here is we're creating a device file. We're setting the mode uh, with the TAC M option, which is going to allow us to set permissions on this. So we're setting those permissions on this file to 666. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and call it null. We're gonna go ahead and put that C there because it's gonna be a character device. And then we're gonna put one, uh, and then space, and then three. And those are gonna be our major and minor identifiers for this file. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Perfect. We're gonna do sudo make make nod and we're going to do tack m666 and then this one is going to be tty and then we're going to do c five space zero 
There we go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do sudo make nod tack m 666 and we're going to call that one as zero. We're going to do c15 one space five. There we go. And we're going to do sudo make nod tack m 666 and then we're going to call this one random. We call it c18. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Whoops. Uh, oh, whoops. I forgot the. Forgot the one here. Sorry, I've got to split these up. There we go. All right, there we go. And if we just do an ls tag l, we can see all of those there. The ones we just created, so perfect. Let's go ahead and clear that out. Now, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be cha do changing the permissions and the ownership on the uh, on the true directory. So this will be required for all the um, for the um, for any pot for any true uh, directory that you're going to be setting up. So we're going to do sudo chown, which allows us to change the ownership. We're going to do root for the user, and then we're going to do colon root for the group. And then we're going to go ahead and do home slash to root. Then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. All right, perfect. Then we're going to do sudo to mod to change the permissions. And then we're going to change those to 0755. If you're not familiar with changing permissions, use the chmod command, and these are the um, these are the binary um, method for setting them. This first one is actually the set. Was it the? Uh, I always forget. I always get them confused. I think it's the uh, set ID or the. It's it's one of those. This I think it's the. Suid I think is what it is. I forget. There's the set ID and there's a set UID, and yeah, it's it's one of those. It's a special one. It's probably something I'll cover in a video in the future. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. Or I can't remember if I've covered I might have covered it in another one, but I'm just I don't use that very often. So uh, the next one is going to be for the um, for the owner of the file, which is going to be um, in this case we're giving them all permissions because three is read, two is write, and one is execute. So here we're giving them all permissions, and then for the groups, which is the second one, and all of their users, is the third one, we're only giving them. Uh, read and execute permissions on this directory. So then we're going to go ahead and do home slash to root. Perfect. All right, great. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the um, set up the directory um, for the binaries that we're going to be adding to our true directory. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go back. We're going to do sudo make dir, and then this one's going to be bin, right? And this is going to be just like the, the slash bin directory that we have on our um, on our host Linux system. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do sudo cp, and we're going to do tag v for verbose output, and then we're going to go ahead and do bin bash two. All right, perfect. Then it went ahead and put it in there for us. We're basically just copying the binary for it over, so that we don't have to, um, so that we don't have to create the binary from scratch or anything like that. This is the simple method for doing that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and check on the libraries that are going to be needed for Bash, and that's what we're that's what we've copied over here. Is we actually copied over at Bash. You could also do just the 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 born shell, which is just which is just sh, um, we're using the born again shell for because um, it's the most common one that's used. So let's go ahead and clear that out. Let's do an ldd. And then we're going to do a dollar sign, and then we're going to put it in parentheses, and we're just going to do which um, bash. Perfect, because we just need to put in the full path to bath and bash, and when you do it this way, it will allow you to go ahead and execute that and give you the and it'll it'll take in that piece of input and put it into the command. So we need these three files. When you when you pull up this, don't worry about this first one. That one's not something you have to worry about. It's going to be every one of the the direct libraries below that. So you're going to have two library directories that you're going to need to create, which is going to be the slash lib and the slash lib sixty four. And we can see that here that we have this one right here lib 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 64 so and that's actually what we're going to do now so let's clear this out we're going to do sudo make dir 
home. We're gonna do um, we're gonna do we're gonna do lib and lib sixty four. All right, there we go. All right, now we need to go ahead and copy some more files over from the lib directories on the host system. So we're gonna do sudo cp tag vf and f is for force. And then we're going to do slash lib. I'm actually going to just copy and paste this command in just because I want to make sure I get it right. It's kind of a longer one. I'm going to do sudo copy tag f a vf, and then we're going to go ahead and do lib. And then we're going to go ahead and here in these curly brace brackets, um, after the slash, we're going to go ahead and put in the first file, which is this one right here. We're going to go ahead and do a comma with no space after it and put in the second half of the second comment. Uh, uh, second library because what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and inside curly braces how you add a list uh, of things so that's what we're doing here so let's go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and move that into the lib directory perfect there we go and now the next one that we're going to go ahead and run because I don't have them up I'm going to go ahead and just copy this one over this is the lib64 one we, on we don't need to sit there and put the curly brace on this one because we only have one lib64 file so let's go ahead and put that in lib64 and again these are the library files that are going to be needed and this is this is pretty much true for all applications they're going to need some kind of libraries for different functions for themselves so perfect we've got those libraries over awesome great now the last thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and make some updates to the ssh config files so we're going to do sudo vim or you can use any text editor that you choose and we're going to do etsy ssh sshd underscore config perfect we're going to come down all the way down to the bottom all right what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just copy them in here actually no i'm just going to type them we're gonna do we're gonna do a hashtag and we're gonna do true directory. Then we're gonna go ahead and do match user. And then I've already created a user which is true root. We're gonna go ahead and do chi root directory. And then we're gonna go ahead and do home slash true root. All right, perfect. So we've got that in there and all this is going to do is this is going to match the user to true so they're going to be the one who's going to be accessing when they access the system through ssh they'll only be able to go into this true directory all right so let's go ahead and do wq exclamation point and it's going to save and exit and then the next thing we need to do is we need to do sudo system ctl restart and then ssh or on ssh will be on most systems and then if you're on a fedora or red hat system it will be sshd perfect there we go all right give me just a second here sorry i just realized that my macbook was not charging because it wasn't plugged in there we go. All right, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and SSH here. Let's clear this out. We're going to do, so if we're using Chirrut. Perfect, there we go. And now let me show you something here. So we're going to try to do ls. Hey, command not found. Um, let's try to do, let's try to do um, page stop. Command not found. Um, it's always when you have to put, do a command on on, uh, <laughs> on the spot, you can't think of any commands to do. But um, yeah, those, those are a couple that are right there. But that's because they're not added to the, we don't have the binaries and we don't have the and we don't have the libraries for these applications. So, but let me show you something here. So this out. Oops, we also don't have clear. Okay, so let's go ahead and do PD, PWD. 
that one works. It shows us that we're in the root of the file system, which I promise I'd show you. And the reason that is, is because this is a shell built-in. Shell built-ins are built directly into the shell. So that's why they're able to be executed. They're, they're not looking for any ex external, um, any external um, application. So that's why it's able to do that. But you can see there that we are able to go ahead and access bash. Or log in through bash through SSH. So let's go ahead and now let's do sudo chroot. Is it the, whoops, uh, sudo chroot. Oh, I think it's home chroot. There we go. Yeah, I can't remember if it was the user or what, but yeah, it's uh, sudo chroot home and then the location of the true directory. And if we try that again, if we just, let's just try tree try ls let's try clear and we can't do any of that here in the directory but we can do the print working directory so we are very very limited uh inside of our true directory so now go forth and lock up all those processes and users check out this other video from my channel uh remember mistakes make you better so keep on making them thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days